<laughs> we do not look down on the brick and mortar no. church. And for those of you who belong to brick and mortar churches, yeah. we're all part of the church. That's right. We're, we're part of the church. The online church is just an extension to reach out to people who <laughs> may not right. attend church or people who want a little bit more. And, and God is giving up anointed teachings. Uh, we're going to take a look today at, we're going to review um, from last week's message, um, um, the uh, dangers of not attending church. And then we're going to flip the script and go and look at the dangers of attending church. And I think after today, you you all, uh, whether you attend a brick or mortar or the online church, you're going to be blessed. You're going to be blessed. So, Shelly, keep yeah. up the good work, and we thank God for you. Thanks for coming on board. Let's give a shout-out to Christy Carpenter up in Kuna, Idaho. Kuna, Idaho. Uh, uh, wow. Must be a wonderful place. Hi, Christy. Hi, how are you doing this morning? Doing fine, doing fine. Blessed and highly favored, as we say, up in Kuna, Idaho. Oh, yes, it's sunshine and it's a beautiful morning. Praise God, praise God. Hey, give my greetings to Brother Aaron and all the carpenters, okay? I'm here, Mr. Carter. I'm listening. Good morning. Hey, God bless hey, you. Aaron. Hey, Aaron, Aaron, I want to commend you, man. I have never met you, but you're a great guy and you're standing in the gap for a lot of people. And you're standing strong on the word of God. And I thank you for uh, lending your wife, Christy, to us in the Paul Baker School of Prophecy and on the online church. I just want to let you know, Aaron Carpenter, we appreciate you, man. Thank you, Dr. Carter. I really appreciate it. I All try right. my best. <laughs> God bless you. God bless you. And Lord, Lord, I'll continue to bless you and your family and your household. Thank you so much. All right. Okay. All right, and there are many people. Uh, I may not greet you today, and uh, I may not see you in our uh, attendee list, and, and many of you are on by phone, and, and many will contact us, connect with us via the recording. I thank you for taking the time out. I thank you for taking the time out to visit with us and worship God at the online church. The services are different. Okay, uh, we don't have a choir. We play the music before we start the service because according uh, to the guidelines, we're not allowed to record anybody else's music, and you don't want to hear me sing. So we uh, play the music before we start the, 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 the recording. So the music, we usually start around quarter of 11 and, uh, and, and play music until about 11 o'clock. We were a little late today, but praise God. And, and you're going to find that visiting the online church will be a life-changing experience. Many of you okay. will come and uh, hit us up for a time and then uh, go back to your own church. And then, But you're coming back because what we're teaching is anointed by the Lord to help you to give to others. And so uh, I praise God for, for uh, people who have gone to their uh, brick-and-mortar fellowship and, and have tuned in after coming back, and what you get, you can take to your brothers and sisters and share with them. We do not compete with pastors. We want to encourage the pastors. It's, it's, a, it's a wonderful calling to be a pastor, and so we help to strengthen pastors. We help to strengthen the body of Christ, and uh, we even uh, thank God for those who come on from overseas. We're looking forward to David Carter. He usually joins us each Sunday from Dubai. That's a long way off. You know, when David Carter comes on, it's 10 hours, 11 hours ahead of our time in Dubai. So if it's, if it's 11.17 now, it's about 9 <laughs> or 10.17 in Dubai. And uh, we just praise God. Looking forward to Elijah uh, coming on soon from Kenya so that you all can get to see him, hear from him. And... Um, see the great work that's being done, and, and see the person who's spearheading our building program in Kenya as we build a church in the, in the jungle, in the wilderness, where there is no church, um, so that the people can have a place of worship. And so we thank God. Well, bless God. Bless God. We're getting ready uh, to hear the word of God. 
And uh, we're going to ask our brother up in Maryville, Pennsylvania, Ryan Trogler, if Ryan would lead us in prayer. And uh, we thank God for you, Ryan. Amen. Uh, good morning again, Pastor. Good morning, Church. Uh, Heavenly morning. Father, we, we want to thank you for making another awesome day today. We want to thank you for giving us the breath of life again. Uh, we want to thank you for dying on the cross and shedding your blood for all of our sins. And Lord, we just want you to come down and touch this online ministry and bless it. Uh, we want, to, want you to bless and, and give the wisdom to Pastor Carter to give us your word once again today. And for that, we just want to say we thank you, we love you, praise you, and glorify you. In Jesus Christ's precious name. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you, Ryan. I want to give a shout out to my son, Wes, in uh, Pennsville, New Jersey. Uh, he's on with us, and we just thank God. And, and bless God. Bless God. Bless God for all the wonderful things that he is doing, all the things he's done, and all the things that he will do. Well, you know, the Lord gave to me early this year my marching orders for the online church. And the Lord said, I want you to teach all this year the basic principles of the faith, the basic okay. principles of Christianity, the basic principles of the Bible. We're going to... Uh, Take the, the, the Christianity 101. We're going to go back to the basics. And so early in this year, God be, began uh, showing me to teach you about a man who built his house on sand and what happened to that house. It was destroyed. And then the Lord began uh, giving me to teach you about the man who built his house on solid rock and how when the winds came, the storms came, adversity came, sickness and disease, tsunamis and floods that house stood, and those two houses uh, um, and the way they were built uh, represent uh, people uh, who hear the word of God and their response to the word of God. And so we want you to build your house on the solid rock, ladies and gentlemen. Make sure your house is built on the solid rock. And so we thank God for you. We thank God for you and uh, give God the praise. And then we begin uh, talking about other things that are basic to our belief as Christians. And the sad thing is there are many churches that are not getting the basics. Many do not get the word of God. Many, hey, Aaron Carpenter, a lot of churches are not getting the basics. And so uh, uh, God is using people like Aaron Carpenter to set the tone for his household teach your household, have family meetings, teach the Word of God. We want to commend Aaron Carpenter and the many men and women who are taking the stand in their households because when the church comes short, God's people, uh, uh, Christ begins in our homes, in our hearts. So we're building strong families in the Lord based on the Word of God. And it's men like Aaron Carpenter and Ryan Trogler and Brian Whitaker and Wes Carter and, and, and women like Terry and uh, Zizla and, and uh, Waynette and Shelly and Christy and uh, Jackie Fisher and so many others who are taking the lead in making sure their households hear from God. And then they're passing it on through email and text messages and uh, forwarding YouTube uh, recordings so that people all over the world can uh, hear the word of God. This is what the online church is all about, taking the gospel to the nations. And we thank God for people who are listening in other countries, uh, uh, Elijah and Jacko and Boycott and, and David and so many others who are taking these messages and are sharing them with their people. Hey, Elijah, we're looking forward to coming, Jackie and I, coming to Kenya next summer, next year, and to graduate our students in the Back to Basic School of Ministry. You said we should have about 75 students being graduated from our school, and praise God. And by the time we get there, our school will be fully accredited. And so we just praise God. We thank God. We thank God for what's going on uh, in, in the body of Christ as the Lord is preparing our people uh, to take the gospel to the nations. God loves everybody, ladies and gentlemen. God does not hate anyone. He loves Amen. us all, and he wants all to be saved. He doesn't want anybody 
to be lost. And so we praise God. Now, just reviewing uh, last week, I preached the message on the dangers of uh, not attending church. We took the, the negative view, the dangers of not attending church. If a person does not attend church, there are dangers. Now, we don't want you coming under condemnation because we do not condemn. But if you're not attending church on a regular basis, you are doing some things that are grieving God and you're cutting yourself off and your family. So we want you to, want to encourage you. If you don't have a church, then we invite you to join us. Uh, to join us at the online church. Okay, I want to ask everybody right now, everyone on your phone, mute your phone, push star six because there's a, a disturbance in the background. And ask everyone on board right now to mute your phones. Thank you. Uh, thank you. That disturbance is gone. Okay, so we don't want you to miss God. We don't want God to miss you. God is reaching out. And thank God, you know, uh, before I start the review of last week's message, and it's going to just be a brief review and then get into this, today's material, there are, there are a lot of people, they're ashamed to come on the online church. They, a lot of people say, it's a cult. You know, people are very ignorant. It's a cult. Or, uh, and then there are pastors. No, 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 the online church, no, that's, that's not of the Lord. It's a cult. There are ignorant pastors out there. And, and ladies and gentlemen, don't let any pastor control your mind. Don't let any, any Christian control your mind because they're ignorant of it and because they've not been blessed by it. Don't let them keep you from uh, getting your blessings. There are a lot of Christians who are, are jealous, ladies and gentlemen. This spirit of jealousy and envy should not be. It's a sin. And so there are people who are jealous of the online church because the online church, we're reaching people all over the world. And we're not even asking them for anything. We don't ask for money. We just, uh, we have one fundraiser, and that's voluntarily. Uh, we don't ask you for your tithes. We ask you give to help us build a church in Kenya if you desire to. But we don't ask for money. We don't invade your lives. And, and so pastors are threatened by this. They are threatened. You know, pastors are funny people. They think they own you. They think you're obligated to uh, uh, listen to what pastors are proud spirits too. Many pastors are proud. They think that what they have is for everybody. And and and, and many pastors, ladies and gentlemen, I may, I may as well tell you, do not seek the Lord. They do not go before the Lord for what they preach. They have some idea they hear or pick up an idea from somebody or something online or something from Facebook, and they and it sounds good, it sounds ear tickling, and they develop a sermon about it. Many pastors are not seeking the Lord and are not feeding the sheep. Jesus told Simon Peter when he restored Peter after Peter backslid, he said, feed my sheep. And so pastors need to go before the Lord to get the messages. I've been before the Lord and I stay before the Lord for these messages so that God will bless you. And, and, and so I'm not jealous of any pastor. I'm not competing with any pastor. I'm trying to help you. Hey, pastor, I'm trying to help you. Hey, dude, I'm trying to help you, man, help you and your congregation so that they can stay on board until you, you start preaching what thus saith the Lord. Ladies and gentlemen, so many people are getting so much mess from the pulpit, and, and, and they're leaving church empty. Ladies and gentlemen, I can't tell you the number of people who go to church empty and leave worse off than how they first attended. And so we want to just be humble before God. We want to stand in the gap and seek God. Lord, what will you have for your people uh, for this Sunday? And so last week God gave me a, a list of things that happen when you do not attend church. This week I'm going to give you a short list of what happens when you do attend church. You'll say, well, that's kind of contradictory, isn't it? No. When you put it together, you'll see uh, that God has a plan and God is working things out to you, his glory and honor and for your benefit. Look, let's take a brief look, a summary of the things that take place when you do not attend church. Number one, you miss out on God's primary design for your spiritual growth. You miss out on God's primary design for your spiritual growth. 
Number two, you disobey God. When you don't go to church, you disobey God, no matter what your excuse is. Now, wait a minute. Back up, Pastor. There are people who cannot attend church. Some are physically ill. Some are confined to beds. beds. Some cannot attend church. There's no church nearby. So God allows for that. And, and there are some who are bedridden, uh, some who are incarcerated, but all in all, if there is an online church, if there's a way that you can connect by your cell phone or connect by your internet, you ought to be there. You ought not to be lazy and laid back and just have an attitude, I ain't going to church. You know what you're saying when you're saying that you don't think God is, is worth, worthy of your attention, and, 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 and that grieves the Holy Spirit. Or if you get so puffed up, uh, I, I'd rather play golf today or, or, or I'd rather attend a party today or, or I've got a, a family picnic to attend. And you don't give God any time, any worship and praise. You're saying, God, there are things that are more important to me than you. And so uh, you miss out on God's primary design for your life. You disobey God. I'm saying you. But we, when I do it, I, I disobey God too. You make a statement to the world that God is not worthy of worship. And then, uh, uh, number four, and you find this out in your life, you don't have any power to minister to anybody. There's no anointing on your life. You can't give anybody what they need when they need it because you have not been before the Lord. Ladies and gentlemen, all good and perfect gifts come from God. If you're not giving him time and attention, then you can't give any. You can't help anybody. You just know their mouth blowing. You're just another wind blowing. You're just another trumpet sounding. You, you're just another uh, tinkling cymbal. And people are tired of all these different voices trying to give them advice, and none of them are right because none of them are of the Lord. Another thing happens when you uh, d do not attend church. You skip, you miss out on a foretaste of heaven. There's a little bit of heaven that we get when we come together. Terry can tell you that in Colorado. Zizza can tell you that in, Co in Texas. Christy Carpenter can tell you that in Idaho. There's a little bit of heaven. I mean, it's just like little, just a little foretaste of heaven when we get together. Uh, Ryan can tell you that. Uh, uh, Tyrone Kirkpatrick can tell you that when we come together on the online church, it's like being with family. And it's just like Jesus is sitting at our dinner table and he's ministering to us all. Just a little foretaste, praise God, makes you want to keep on coming on and on. There are other things that happen when you do not attend church. Uh, what happens? Well, it's a sin. You sin when you don't attend church. You violate Hebrews 10, 25, which warns us about the assembling of, of, of one another. Hebrews uh, 10, 25 says, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much the more as you see the day approaching. Verse 26, for if you sin willfully after that, we, if, if we sin willfully after that, we have received the knowledge of the truth there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins. And ladies and gentlemen, going to church helps you to stop sinning. Break those sins. Don't keep on willfully sinning, sinning after you get saved. Ladies and gentlemen, there's a false teaching out there. And a lot of you set under this kind of teaching. Uh, false teaching that you can do anything you want to do after you give your heart to Jesus. No, no, I'll contraire. No. The Bible warns us about continuing to live in sin. Read Romans chapter 6. It's a warning about continuing to live in sin after you get saved. And so uh, those people who say, well, once saved, always saved. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're sitting under a once saved, always saved pastor, you need to pack up your bags and get out of there. You need to get out of there with the quickness. You ought to run. You ought to flee. You ought to run to Jesus. You ought to go where the, the word of God is rightly being preached, where the whole gospel is being preached. If you don't attend church, pride takes over. Also, it's a sign of self-righteousness. Oh, I'm, I'm all right. I'm all right. I can, do, I can do this. I got this. Aaron Carpenter down here in Georgia, they say, I'm all right. I got this. I don't need God. I don't need God. Uh, God is for uh, uh, those who need a crutch. 
Ladies and gentlemen, we need God. Wake up, people. It's a sign that you think more highly of yourself than you ought to when you do not attend church. It's a sign that you're looking down on others. It's a sign of separation from God. It's a sign of apostasy. And apostasy means a falling away from God. The more you drift, you start drifting every third Sunday. You start drifting every fourth Sunday. You got a family picnic on the third Sunday. You're going to the museum on the fourth Sunday. You're going to the hat show on the fifth Sunday. You're going then before long. You're going uh, on the first Sunday. You're, you're going uh, to uh, McDonald's. Uh, you're taking your grandchildren to Mickey D's. Ladies and gentlemen, before long, you are lost and you have no power in your life. And then Satan just comes in for the kill. And that's the uh, one of the, another effect of not going to church. Satan targets you. He targets you. And just like when a lion is stalking a herd of wildebeest, the lion will look for that weak one and separate that weak one from the herd. And before long, that weak one becomes that lion's meal. Well, Satan is like a roaring lion seeking whom he may be devoured. And so those are just some things that happen when you do not attend church. There's a longer list, but I'm not going to go there. You go to my YouTube channel, will you please? Go to YouTube, Leroy Carter, and you can look at all of our messages that we've recorded, all these basic principles that we've been teaching since the beginning of the year. Yes, you can even go back into those anointed lessons from last year, but you can follow this whole series, share these messages with others, because the design is to build up the body of Christ. We want to build up the body of Christ in the name of Jesus. Why? Because the Lord is coming back again soon. Contrary to what they're saying in some of the churches, the Lord is coming back soon, ladies and gentlemen. And he's not going to tell you when he's coming. No one knows the day nor the hour. Jesus doesn't even know. Mute your phone, please. Mute your phone. Thank you. Thank you. Praise God. Uh, Jesus doesn't even know the day or the hour in which uh, the Father is going to send him back to get his church. Jesus can come any moment. He can crash through the sky. And if he comes today, will you be ready? If and, and, and look, don't be re religious, okay? I can't see you. I can't see you. Uh, now, if you want to open up your webcam and get on here, I want to see your face, and I want to look in your eyes and ask you, if Jesus comes today, will you go with him? Will you be ready? Or have you been continuing in a sin that the Lord told you to get out of, but you're still doing it? You're still drinking liquor? You're still smoking reefer? You're still crack, smoking crack. You're still taking opioids. You're still running with your neighbor's wife. You're still running with your neighbor's husband. The Lord told you. He warned you. He warned you to stop that. But you're continuing in sin. Romans 6, 1 and 2 says, What shall we say then? If we continue in sin, shall we, shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. Ladies and gentlemen, once saved is not always saved. If you continue in sin, or if I continue in sin, after having the knowledge of Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord, there is no hope for us. There is no hope for us unless we quickly repent. So if you're in the sin, you, you've got sin in your life. Hey, I want to speak to those, those out there who, who, are, who are homosexual and gay and lesbian. I don't bash homosexuals. I don't bash gays and lesbians. That's your choice for a lifestyle, but it's a wrong choice. It's a bad choice. You may say, well, God made me this way. Well, God did not make you this way. The world made you that way. You make choices, but you can choose to be made whole. Later, don't get mad at me. Don't, don't run off. Don't, don't, don't click me off. Don't shut me down. I'm preaching the truth. There is no temptation taking you but such as is common to man. But God is faithful. He will not tempt you more than what you're able. He will deliver you. 
And if, if, if you're homosexual, you got people in your household who are homosexual or gay or lesbian, they can be delivered. If they want to be delivered, they can be delivered. And I, I, I warn you, don't, don't, don't run off to some gay church or some lesbian church. Because if you go off to a gay church, they're supporting your lifestyle. The lesbian church, they, they welcome you because they want more like them in there. And, they're, and they don't preach deliverance. They don't preach uh, 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 deliverance. And they think they're saved. Ladies and gentlemen, the Bible says if we continue in sin, no, once we have gotten saved, there's if we continue in sin, if we choose to continue living in sin, there's no salvation for us. It's in the Bible, ladies and gentlemen. Don't get mad at me. I'm just bringing the news. I'm bringing good news. The good news is that no matter what you're in, no matter what situation has you, no matter what prison Satan has put you in, there is a way of escape. And, and, and one of the things about the online church is this. A lot of people in the brick and mortar church are not getting delivered because the preachers are not preaching deliverance. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, uh, there are a lot of people attending church today, and, and they're racist. Their hearts, they hate blacks, they hate whites, they hate Hispanics, they hate anybody except who they are. There are a lot of black preachers uh, who preach racism. There are a lot of white preachers who preach racism. I asked Paul Begley, Paul Begley, how come white preachers don't preach against racism? How come they don't? Paul said, they ain't going to. They ain't going to. I said, why not? He said, I can't tell you why. They just ain't going to. Well, hey, 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 white preacher. How do you expect to go to heaven when you held back on preaching the truth of the gospel? What you're doing is you're promoting hatred of other people, and God is love. Hey, black preacher, uh, how come you're not preaching uh, that we ought to love whites and, and we ought to love all people? Uh, uh, well, you know, they put us in slavery. No, they didn't put you in slavery. Our own tribal chiefs sold our people to the Arabs and the whites for money and for trinkets. Our own chiefs gathered up our own people and sold them to slavers. So we can't blame everything happening on the white man. Preach the gospel, ladies and gentlemen. The gospel is the gospel of love. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. Well, Pastor Carter, you sound like an Uncle Tom. I don't care what you think I sound like. I know one thing, I'm preaching the gospel. Call me whatever you want to call me, but I'm preaching the gospel, and I'm going to keep on preaching the gospel until Jesus calls me home because it was the gospel that set me free. It was the gospel that set me free from hatred and jealousy and envy. It was the gospel that set me free from sin, from adultery, from fornication, from lust. It was the gospel that set me free from drugs and alcohol. It was the gospel of Jesus Christ, the good news. And, and uh, now that Jesus has set me free, I'm going to preach freedom so that you can get set free. So you can keep on believing in your mama, your grandfather, your cousin, your, your, your homies, your card playing partners, your, your bowling partners, your pool shooting partners, your drinking buddies, or you can believe Jesus. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. That's the way it is, ladies and gentlemen. There is no gray matter. As for me and my house, as for Jack and me, we will serve the Lord. Well, uh, you know, you serve the Lord, you're, gonna, you're in for uh, retaliation. Yes, 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 the Bible says if any man will follow Jesus, uh, he or she will, will suffer persecution. Yes, I know that, but I'm going to preach. I'm going to preach it until I can't preach anymore because uh, uh, I, I've got a taste of heaven on the inside of me, a taste of heaven. Jesus has shown me a glimpse of heaven, and heaven is where Jesus lives. And now he lives in me. So no, 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 no. I won't turn back. I don't want you to turn back. Don't turn back to perdition. Stay with Jesus. Some of you need to stop going to those dead churches you're going to. You think you're going to change that church? Some of you need to get up. You need to get out. You need to, you need to make a statement. Hey, I love you all, but I'm going where I can grow. 
Some of you at, are at the same spot. You've been in for the last 20, 30 years because you keep going back to that dead mess, that uh, uh, confusion, uh, that, that, that hatred, uh, that racist church, that, hate, that church that hates Mexicans, that church that hates uh, people who are different. You need to get a change in your life, ladies and gentlemen. You need to get a change. Some people are locked in by, because of their own minds. They're trapped. They're prisoners of their own minds. Their minds, they can't think of themselves in any place other than First Baptist because my granddaddy built it. My grandmama helped them build it. My daddy was the first pastor. My, my, my mama was the first lady. And this was mama's church. And Mama's church is dead, dead as a doorknob, but you keep on going. Ladies and gentlemen, you need some fresh manna. You need to go into the presence of the Lord. Preachers, show people how to enter into the presence of the Lord. Show them how to commune with God. Join the Paul Bagley School of Prophecy, where we teach you how to commune with God, how to enter into his presence, how to stay into his presence, how to get the answers from God, how to get direction from God. We're getting what many people don't receive in the church. So thank God for the online church. Thank God that the online church is bold enough and courageous enough. Okay, so I'm going to have to shorten uh, today's message, the dangers of going to church. And we'll just give you a few dangers of going to church. Number one, the danger of going to church, and I could write a book on this topic, it has come to the point in America where people are having to leave church to find God and find the truth. People have to leave church to find God and find the truth. The average pastor has been caught up into the apostate new evangelical movement, and that is the wishy-washy, compromising, weak-kneed, milk a toast head-in-the-sand, Bible-corrupting, cotton-candy religion, of our time. There are many inherent dangers of going to church today, and I want to mention a few of them. The first of all, the false church. Ladies and gentlemen, there are a lot of false churches, churches where people are not born again. Ladies and gentlemen, it's sad to say, but there are denominations that do not believe you have to be born again. There are denominations that practice joining the church, do good works. There are bishops who do not, who are not born. I know some bishops who are not born again. I know people who are preachers who are not born again. I went to seminary with a plethora of preachers who did not believe you had to be born again. And every one of them got on a, a church. Their denomination appointed them to pastor a church after they graduated from seminary. It was a sin and a shame. I mean, they mocked me. They did try to put me to shame because I talked about being born again, being washed in the blood. And many of them went on to lead large congregations and were not born again, did not have, and to this day, do not have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. What kind of church is that? But that's the majority of churches in America, ladies and gentlemen. 80% of Americans do not attend church. But let's say 80% of people who do attend church are not made aware that you must be born again because they do not have born again leadership. So there are a lot of false churches. When I look at the universe, the Unitarian Universalist Church, 18% of them are atheists. 18% of the members will declare that they are atheists. That's the Unitarian Universalist Church. The United Church of Christ is pitiful. They don't even believe in the, the Trinity. They don't believe in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You don't mention Jesus in the United Church of Christ. You mention God. You don't mention the Holy Spirit. They don't have room for Jesus or uh, the Holy Spirit. Ladies and gentlemen, you need to know what your church stands for, and you need to discern, and you need to be attentive and alert. And, 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 and uh, the Jehovah's Witnesses... They call themselves a church. Ladies and gentlemen, they don't even believe that Jesus is the Son of God. And then uh, uh, some of you say, well, I, I'm, I'm Muslim. You're Muslim? What's that mean? What's that mean? It means that you don't believe Jesus is the Son of God. That's what it means. 
you you believe Jesus was a prophet, but you do not believe yeah. he was the son of God. Well, let me tell you, Muslims, this. Jesus is the son of God. He died on the cross for the sins of the whole world, even for you Muslims. And if you will receive him as Savior and Lord, you will be saved. Well, Pastor Carter, you know they'll kill you if you say that in some circles. Well, you know, to be absent from the body is to be at home with the Lord. At least one thing you can say about Pastor Carter. Pastor Carter was no punk when it came to preaching the gospel. I preach it because I believe it. I receive Jesus as my Savior. There's no other way to be saved, no other name under heaven whereby you must be saved other than the name of Jesus. That's it, ladies and gentlemen. That's it. Ladies and gentlemen, so if you're in a false church, you need to get out. You need to get out. Zizla, you keep on doing what you're doing in that church. Zizla, the Pope is not God. The Pope is not God on earth. You tell the people the Pope is not God. There is no apostolic succession. The Pope is not God. You tell the people the truth. Tell them. I mean, they're sitting up in the Catholic church, and they're praying the rosary and and. And, and fingering those beads, ladies and gentlemen, they're going through all these motions, all these rituals. Uh, 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 they have all these icons. But just let tell them, you must be born again and show them how to be born again by receiving the Lord Jesus Christ. So there are false churches. While I'm on this, here's another false thing going on in churches. There are preachers today. One of them grins, on, uh, grins every Sunday morning when I turn the TV on. He, he's a master of the grin. He's got the sweetest smile. Never preaches about sin. Never preaches about uh, repentance. Never uh, tells people that you must be born again. Uh, uh, and and he got, he, he's got about 40,000 members in the church. And, and they come and they get their ears tickled. They, they, they love that smile. They get their ears tickled, but they are not challenged to be born again or to, to, to live holy and righteous. Ladies and gentlemen, we preach holiness and righteousness in the name of Jesus. Beware, beware uh, of, of these cults. Beware of the church of Scientology. Uh, the founder of that church is an atheist. Was, he's dead now, was an atheist. And he called his best friend, a well-known uh, Satan, Satanist pastor, my good friend. Ladies and gentlemen, stay away from the Church of Scientology. There are places you need not go. There are people you need not follow. There are big-name people you need not follow. I'm not going to call their name today, but you contact me. I'll give you some names. Another thing about the danger of attending the church. One thing, as I just said, uh, the danger of uh, attending church is that there are false churches. Another thing about the danger of attending church today, there are false Bibles. They're usually false Bibles, ladies and gentlemen. Many do not even use a Bible. Ladies and gentlemen, I went to a church in Chicago many years ago the preacher didn't even use a Bible. He read from some book. It was not the Bible. He christened the child with the sweat of his brow. He took sweat off his forehead and put it on that child's head and christened that child. Ladies and gentlemen, I got out of there. I got out of there. And you need to get out of those places if you're in one of them. There are churches they don't even use the Bible. You're not even allowed to bring a Bible to some churches. Well, what do they use? They use somebody's book, somebody's bestseller. They use somebody's dissertation. Ladies and gentlemen, you need to be aware. Or they use a translation of the King James Bible, and that translation leaves, leaves you up to whatever you want to think. There are certain translations that... Uh, put down the deity of Christ, ladies and gentlemen. You need to know what kind of Bible you're reading. Pre personally, I prefer the King James Version. I know the King James is the authorized Bible. God anointed him to choose 70 biblical scholars to translate 
from the uh, Hebrew and the, and the Greek and the Latin into the English language. I know the anointing of God was upon that Bible. But you need to be careful what Bible you're using. Another thing that happens when you attend church, there's no biblical authority. No biblical authority. Many churches forget that the Word of God is supposed to be the authority in a church. In some churches, the authority is the pastor or bishop so-and-so. Too many pastors take it upon themselves to control people's lives when they ought to be counseling people to make their own decisions using biblical principles. And many of you, when you call me for counseling or email me with counseling, you know I give you the Bible. You know, you know when, when I counsel you, I tell you to go to God in prayer. Seek God in the name of Jesus. And especially those of you who have been our students in the Paul Begley School of Prophecy, you know what I'm going to tell you. You be like Habakkuk. Stand on your guard post. Station yourself on the rampart and watch and see what he will say to you. You go to God and you ask him your question and you wait on him and you don't let any other voice speak to you until God speaks. And God will speak. But ladies and gentlemen, there are churches where there is no biblical authority. Here's another thing happening in a lot of churches and a lot of households. There are churches where, where there, the churches are predominantly female women and ladies don't ever place your pastor above your husband. I'm going to say that again. Aaron Carpenter, you're my witness. Ladies don't ever place your pastor above your husband. You may say, well, my husband is an alcoholic, or my husband is a druggie, or my husband runs with other women. Don't ever place your pastor above your husband. Your husband is still the head over you. And the Bible says, the Bible says, you can win your wayward husband to the Lord by the way you conduct yourself, by the way you obey the word of God. But so many women, so many women mess up their households. And I'm a witness to this. They, they will tell you, well, well, Pastor Carter uh, is better than you and this and that. Or I, I remember there are times when uh, there were women who would tell their children, uh, uh, Pastor Carter, I'm going to call him here so he can spank you. And they say this in front of their husbands. Ladies and gentlemen, that's the worst thing you can say to your husband, to uh, belittle him, to, to uh, dehumanize him that way. Don't ever put a pastor, I don't care who that pastor is, don't ever put a pastor above your husband. Well, you don't know my husband. Well, I know me. I'm a husband, been a husband, and I know, I know the pitfalls husbands get into, but I know how God can deliver a husband and make him to the head of the household. Come on, Aaron, a carpenter, say amen. I know how God can deliver a man and establish him over his household. And so uh, uh, there are some women need to listen up. There are some men you need to fess up and listen up and stand up and stand tall and do what God has called you to do. Praise God. Here's another thing, and we're still on the, uh, the danger of attending church. There's no biblical authority in some churches. Some people are, are some pastors recommend divorce. Ladies and gentlemen, I do not recommend divorce. You can call me, and I've had people call me this week telling me what's going on in their household. But I do not recommend divorce. Divorce is a sin. And if you've ever been a party of a divorce, you need to repent. If you've remarried, you need to repent for having been a party of a divorce. Even if you did not initiate the divorce and you were divorced, you need to repent. Lord, forgive me for being a party of a divorce. Divorce is a sin. When a man and a woman are married, they are married until death parts them. And so, so, so if you've been a, a victim of a divorce or you've remarried, if you married someone who was divorced, just repent. Ask God to forgive you. Ask God to forgive your partner. And then you keep on stepping, keep on getting up. Praise God. I know this is good. I know this is helping somebody. Another thing that happens, and we're going to finish this up soon. Another thing that happens when you attend church, a danger of attending church, 
playing the church game. Ladies and gentlemen, there are millions of people who ought to be tuned into the online church today. But you know what? It usually takes someone who's desperate at the end of their rope before they come to the online church. And, and I know many of you and, 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 and know your situations, but praise God you had the courage to come to the online church. Look, it took me being in a desperate position to let God use me to the praise of his glory. So many people are content going to their church knowing they've got problems, knowing they're not getting fed, knowing they're continuing in sin, knowing they're not getting the gospel, but they keep on going there. The battlefield is between your ears, ladies and gentlemen. Between ear, the right ear and the left ear, there's a space, maybe about six inches or more or less. A space is called the brain, the mind. And your mind is set. You're going to go there because your mama went there, your granddaddy went there, and uh, you raised your kids there, and you're going to go there, and, 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 and that's where you went to Sunday school. But if there is no anointing on that church, ladies and gentlemen, you're going to perish. A lot of people are going to perish. People are perishing in dead churches. And here's something I want to share with you because the Lord put this on me this morning. And uh, if it offends you, I'm sorry, but uh, God put this on my heart this morning. God said people ought to stop going on Facebook and saying happy heavenly birthday to certain people. You know, people who have passed on, you see on Facebook, happy heavenly birthday. God said, don't do that. The Lord told me, ladies and gentlemen, this morning, don't do that. Don't wish anybody a happy heavenly birthday, even if it's your mom or your dad or your brother and sister or your children. Don't wish them a happy heavenly birthday because, ladies and gentlemen, the real deal is this. There's a strong spirit of delusion. Everybody who died is not in heaven. And I'm not talking about your relatives and loved ones. I'm just saying what the Lord put on my heart. Everybody who dies does not go to heaven. And I don't have a heaven to put them in or a hell to put them in. I'm not the judge. But God told me, stop saying, don't say, happy heavenly birthday or HHB. No, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that because I don't know where they are. I'm going to keep on living my life and preaching the gospel. And I don't know whether Uncle Willie or Brother John or, or so-and-so are in heaven or not. I'm just going to remember their birthday. But I'm not going to say happy heavenly birthday because everybody we're wishing happy heavenly birthday ain't in heaven. I know that's tight, but it's right. Now, let's get back to this playing the church game. So many believers know how to play the church game. Sadly, the average church today has no soul-winning program, which is why the church is mostly composed of old codgers, old goats like me, and only a handful of young people. They know how to play the church game. Young people are sick and tired of it. Sadly, other so-called churches have resorted to using the devil's rock and roll music, hip-hop music, to lure young people into a worldly church. So they're freaking, man. They're freaking. They're freaking, man. They're dancing. They're freaking. They're on stage. Uh, pastor invites some of them up stage. They're freaking. They're doing their dance. They're streaking. They're, they're, they're uh, jerking, doing whatever they want to do. Ladies and gentlemen, it's worldly. God is not pleased with this. Most believers have fallen into the same old rut of sitting through a church service, singing a few songs, laughing at a few corny jokes the pastor has been telling for 20 years, passing the offering plate, and then hearing some sugar stick sermonette which has been carefully written as to not offend the wealthy people in the church. I'm going to read that again. Most believers have fallen into the same old rut of sitting through a church service, singing a few songs, <laughs> laughing at a few corny jokes from the pastor, passing the offering plate, and then hearing a sugar stick sermonette, 
which has been carefully curtailed as to not offend the wealthy people in the church. Yet, the world goes to hell, and they think they're heading to heaven. Ladies and gentlemen, homosexuals continue to parade their wickedness up and down the streets of America. Ladies and gentlemen, the Mardi Gras, where a lot of people, especially Catholics, go out and, and freak and do their last uh, minute sin. And then, before long, they put lint, they put the ashes on their forehead. And then they're freaked and they've deked and they've done this and that and sinned, done it publicly, and then they put the ashes on their head to let people think they're holy. Politicians continue to steal and commit blatant crimes in front of our faces. We got some in, in Washington, D.C. They are lying to the American public. The sad thing about this whole thing is the American public has fallen for the okie doke. They love the lies, and they will kill you if you're not of a certain party. They will kill you if you don't support a certain person. So it goes on and on. Then we have the people using the church as a crutch. Using the church as a crutch. We end with this. Many people make the mistake of riding on the pastor's spirituality. Oh, my pastor, he's a great man of God. My pastor this, my pastor that. I've got people here in Georgia. They don't even want to talk to me anymore. When I first came to Georgia eight years ago, everybody was talking about Bishop so-and-so. I'm not going to call his name. He died a couple of years ago. Everybody was talking about Bishop so-and-so. Powerful ministry. Great ministry. He even sat on the T.D. Jakes. Great man of God. And then when they found out that Bishop so-and-so loved little boys, they stopped talking about Bishop. They don't even want to talk to me anymore. I mean, they put me down. Uh, Pastor Carl, you're trying to raise your church. You need to come and sit under Bishop so-and-so. No, I don't. Bishop so-and-so ain't right. He wasn't right. And now these people, some of them don't even go to church. You know why? Because they put their loyalty in Bishop so-and-so. And Bishop so-and-so love little boys. There are some bishops they love little girls. There are some bishops they love grown men. Don't put your trust in any man or woman. Don't use the church as a crutch. Don't let the church convince you to be a Democrat or a Republican. Ladies and gentlemen, you got more Democratic crooks and more Republican crooks in Washington, D.C., and the sad thing is the church has been blinded by the political demons I say that again. The church has been blinded by the political demons. You need to seek God even for your politi politicians and your leaders. You need to seek God for how you vote. Well, we could go on and on, but my time is running out. In conclusion, it's time for believers to stop playing church. It's a dangerous game, ladies and gentlemen. It's time for people to start following the word of God instead of following men. It's time for wives to stop giving more authority to their pastor than to their husband. It's time for people to start asking questions of the clergy and holding them financially accountable for every dime spent. It's time for us to rid our churches of false and corrupted Bibles. It's time to take a stand against evils like abortion and racism and homosexuality. It's time to go door to door soul winning. We could go on and on, but my time is running out, and I thank God for yours. One more thing. It's time to take a stand against extravagance in the church. It's a sad thing. It's sad to say, but most pastors... When they get a taste of the good life, when they take, get a good taste of prosperity, and this includes church leaders also, they fall into the sin of covetousness. Covetousness. 
the love of money. And the love of money has destroyed many congregations. Ladies and gentlemen, we don't ask you for your money. I'm just asking that you support the mission to build a church in Africa. We need a $1,000 more dollars. $1,000 more dollars, and we can build a church in Africa. We can start that building program next month, just $1,000. I'm not asking for, for tithes. You tithe in your local church. You're tithe in the ministry God has put on your heart. But also, if you can, help us to build the church in Africa where people don't have to sit under the trees during the monsoons or the storms or the, uh, the sandstorms, or the dust storms, where they have a building where they can worship and learn. We're looking at building a training center where men and women can come from all parts of Kenya and get, be trained by our Back to Basics School of Ministry. And many of them will be using the, the textbooks God has anointed me to write. And they will go forth throughout the whole our, our continent of Africa, even uh, throughout the world. Don't be surprised if many Africans come to America to help evangelize America. America needs all the help we can get. And so I shared with you the dangers of going to church. Last week I shared with you the dangers of not going to church. Next week I'd like to share with you what happens when you receive Jesus. We're going to take a good look at all the marvelous things about what happens when you receive Jesus. Father God, we thank you, we bless you, we praise you, and we honor you. Lord God, if there's anyone listening today, whether they're live or listening to the recording, if they have not received Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord, help them, Lord, this day, this moment, to ask Jesus to come into their lives and be Savior and Lord, that they, that they will receive the Lord Jesus Christ. You said in your word, for as many as received him, to them gave you power to become the children of God. Save today, heal and deliver. And we thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. If you listen today and you want to be saved, just take time out right now. Make this confession unto God. You're speaking to God, not to anyone else. Speak this to God. And mean it with your whole heart. Father God, repeat after me. Father God, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I believe that Jesus Christ is your son. I believe that he died on the cross for my sins. I invite Jesus right now and forever to come into my heart and live inside of me. And I make him to be my Savior and my Lord. And I thank you, Father, and I praise you. Now, Lord, fill me with the precious Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. You can get this recording on uh, uh, YouTube later on. And uh, many of you, I will email this message out to you, the recording. Play it over and over again. Play it for your family. Play it. Even take it to your church and 